Greetings. It's June 2nd, 2018, and we uh, today we're going to work on the wine cap mushroom terrarium grow bin. We're not going to work on it, I just want to show it to you. And then we're going to also take the moringa pods from the 2017-18 harvest and de-seed those. So that's the game plan. Um, let's start off with the elephant in the room, which is the seed pods from 2018. They're pretty darn long. As you can see, that's well over two feet. Well, yeah. And we got a lot of those. So out of 43 trees that I had, um, I got that and more. But that's the vast majority of the ones. So today we'll be deceiving those. And I wanted to show you over here. Um, my uh, terrarium grow bin. And then right there is what is a uh, reptile light. It's 12 watts. And it kicks on at night. I just turned it on momentarily since it's past the normal hours. But basically what we have is a terrarium that has um, a coleus in there. It's doing quite well, you can see. And then I have cuttings. And so whenever, whenever it grows high enough to hit the plastic top, I clip it and put it in the bin here. And these are all really kicking ass. This is uh, pasteurized sand. And I got one little container of water. Um, and then I have a mycelium of King Strafaria um, wine cap mushroom. Um, it's also known as the garden giant. And right now it just looks like a big white ball. And I've got uh, vermiculite covering it to help keep the moisture in. But every day I come over and spray it. Not that it really needs it because the moisture in there collects. And then I fan it 50 times. Particularly the mushroom part of it. It likes that or ear circulation. I'm thinking of getting one of those little uh, solar powered fans that you see on those goofy hats that they have at uh, baseball games and stuff. And so that it'll, when the light hits it, it will automatically create some circulation in there. In any event, that's one of the things that I do. And then to keep the whole thing cool, because after all, this is Arizona and this room is not air conditioned. I have a bottle of water, and it looks like a bottle of water, but but what it really is, is a frozen bottle. So in my freezer, I have a bunch of these frozen bottles, and so I just swap it out. In case the uh, fridge electricity goes out, which it hasn't, thank God. Um, I have something in the fr in the freezer that will help keep it cool while electricity is waiting to happen. So what I do is I put that in place. And that helps keep the whole thing cool for up until when I come out here in the evening and mist and fan all over again. So that's the story about that. All right. 
So let's start off with one of these. I'm just going to just going to roll it on a hard surface. And then out comes these seeds. Let's see a close up of this. So that's what a viable seed looks like. Over here outside I've got um, 16 plants, potential for 16, and so far in the middle, if you can see, I got one coming up there, one already started there, one started there. So as they pop up, I'll move them towards the middle, but so far I planted them about, they're, they're not particularly fast, these guys. Um, it's been about two weeks, a little less than two weeks. So I was concerned that the um, viability rate, the germination rate, was low on these. But I don't know. Um, they're starting to pop up, so maybe just taking longer. Seems like when they're in the ground, they come up quicker. Um, but in any event, uh, let's take a look at more of this. So those are some good-looking seeds there. And I'll... I'll end up taking the the um, shaft and all, all of this stuff and putting it in my compost pile. So none of this will go to waste. I'll push these off to the side and do another one. So what's the trick? Just lay it down. And rotate it and let the hard ribs help you get the seeds out of there. And as you can see, there's quite a few in each pot. Sorry. Apparently I have the zoom mode on right now. You just have to be aware of where the camera is. And we'll do just one more. Up oh, here's a nice chubby one. Ooh, that was nice and easy. And some more viable looking seeds. I think you get the idea. As you can see, I've got some work to do. Okay, we, um, I went ahead and processed all of those. Here's the bags of um, shells. These are going to go into the compost bin, or the, for the earthworms, vermicost bin. Not bin, pile, sorry. So you saw that big old bunch I had, but you can see how much of this was bulk. So here is here are the, I'll zoom in a little bit. Here are what the viable seeds look like. I think they're still looking pretty good. And I bought about this many, uh, I think it cost, this would have been about $20 worth, 15 to $20 worth plus shipping from India. But the good thing about these is that they are 
something that um, grew in Arizona. So the next generation of seeds that grow, which as I showed you earlier today, these are the ones that are coming up from the same grouping. So you can see that there's a new one popping up. And so uh, hopefully the sun won't nail them. I've got, I'm going to cover it with this thing over there a little later before the sun hits them. Just to help them out a little bit. But um, that's what's going to happen. And I planted some over here, but they didn't take. A couple came up, but the bugs, some bugs were eating them. Right now, that's sweet sorghum over there. You can see that. I'm going to take that top off today. Sweet sorghum is doing pretty well. And I hope you can see that. So, that's it for the processing of this year's crop of Moringa. And I think that's a pretty good, pretty good amount. Pretty happy with that. And that's pretty viable looking seed right there. I mean, that's what, what I would call viable is anything that has these nice wings on it. These uh, three wings. So when they are blowing off the, um, the shaft, when they're on the vine, the idea is that the wind will blow and they'll, and even if they hit the ground, it will blow and give them a little mobility so they don't grow right next to the mother plant. But uh, that's my pile. Pretty happy with that. So time to get on with my other side of today's stuff. But by the way, in my terrarium here, I forgot to mention the reason why it's a terrarium is because the mycelium mass produces carbon dioxide. So it has a symbiotic relationship with um, with the nice uh, with whatever plants are growing in there. And these cuttings are kicking ass. I put them in last weekend, but they're all looking very good. And you've seen cuttings before, but they ba you basically tr trim the leaf in half, give it some area. And then you, um, I'm just sticking it in wet sand. I put some rooting compound on the bottom of it. But when we start seeing secondary shoots, we'll know that things are doing quite well. But they're all standing up quite nicely. And even the mother plant, Coleus, is doing really well. I'd be curious to see how it does next to my coldness um, device, my uh, ice, uh, my bottle of ice. So uh, we'll see. But that's to keep the ideal temperature for the mycelium mass is between probably 55 and 80. And this room clearly gets over 80 degrees because it's this is Arizona and there's no air conditioning in this room. So the mycelium mass is kicking butt all the way around the um, the, uh, the spawn ball. And the reason why it's not on the top quite so much is because I covered it all up with vermiculite. But I covered the sides of vermiculite too. But before long, we'll see some mushrooms popping out of there. But I just want to let you know, it's the carbon dioxide of this thing that are making these do so darn well. So that's why it makes such a great terrarium. So that's it. Um, time to put this away, sweep the floor, and get on with my Saturday stuff. But I'm just tick pink that I've got all of these viable seeds to grow. And they're going to go into the refrigerator. They may say you don't need to stratify them, but I do believe that um, giving them the illusion of cold winter. So I'll put them in a quart bag or a gallon bag in the fridge and let them hang out there for months. And then when I pull them out, they'll, they'll be really happy to, to join the warm soil. So that's it for now. Um, 
We'll show you some more progress on the mushrooms as they happen. The wine cap, King Strafaria, Strafaria Lugoso Annulata. I could have got that backwards, but I'll, I'll correct it at a future date. All right, thanks a lot.